cramped seating, baggage fees, and the depressing lack of snacks. Airplanes have lost their mid-century glamour. But what if you could spend a lot less time on a plane? You might not remember, but there was a plane called the Concorde that flew fast. Like, really fast. It had a cruising speed of 1,354 miles per hour, which is twice the speed of sound. Also known as Mach 2, a flight from New York to London, which typically takes seven hours, would only take three and a half hours going supersonic on the Concorde. Sadly, the Concorde is long gone. Its final flight touched down in 2003, and since then the Concorde sonic boom has mostly faded from memory. But that's all about to change. A half a dozen startups are gambling on the return of supersonic air travel, and new aviation laws could help that speed to come back. There are questions, of course. Will it be affordable or only for the super rich? What about the environment, and why does anyone need to go that fast? But there is no question that supersonic air travel is cruising back into popularity. So a little bit of history first. Supersonics were all the rage in the 1960s when testing first began for commercial flights, but the plane struggled with high cost and pollution concerns. Ultimately, only one plane saw long-term commercial success, a collaboration between British and French companies called the Concorde. The Concorde's maiden voyage in 1976 kicked off a new era of luxury air. Travel tickets could cost up to $12,000 for round trip, which included gourmet meals and a chance to rub elbows with politicians and celebrities. But the biggest selling point was speed with twice daily service from London to New York. It wasn't uncommon for business people to take day trips and return home before the bars and pubs closed. The Concorde ultimately went out of business for a couple reasons. In July of 2000, a Concorde jet operated by Air France blew up shortly after takeoff, killing 113. In just a year later, the September 11th attacks caused a major setback for the entire aviation industry. The Concorde never recovered. But almost 15 years later, in 2013, NASA began funding a few research projects aimed at reviving supersonics. The funding was modest, only about $2.3 million. But the projects all tackled a different technical challenge facing supersonic travel. For example, while plenty of people want to fly faster than sound, no one wants those planes flying over their homes. In fact, Congress passed a law in 1973 banning supersonic flights flying over land in the United States. That's because supersonic aircraft create a trail of deafening sound called a boom carpet. As the plane's nose pushes into the air, it flings aside air molecules and waves of pressure like a boat. Awaiting when those waves hit the landscape, they create a loud, booming noise that could sometimes damage property. NASA wants to figure out how to muffle the sonic boom. It split initial tests between Texas and Florida. Since air behaves differently at different temperatures in different humidities, and it awarded a $247.5 million contract to Lockheed Martin to develop a quieter supersonic plane. That research may find a foothold soon, because right now the FAA is considering lifting the 1973 ban on civil supersonic flights. Two decades have now passed with all the progress the world has made in its march through time. Some could not accept a new era bound by mere subsonic travel. We're now approaching a possible renaissance of supersonic passenger planes, and this time it might actually work. There are three key players in the race to bring back supersonic travel, none of which are Airbus, Boeing, or any other current aircraft manufacturer. Arian was founded in 2003, the same year as Concorde's retirement, and has spent the decade since developing supersonic private jets. The AAS-2 in the time scale of aircraft development, they're not too far from launch with production expected to start in 2023 and a possible launch by 2026, boosting financial backing from Boeing and a partnership with GE for engine development. Arian is certainly not in the business of selling pipe dreams. Operating with a similar business, Strategy Spike Aerospace also aims to develop a smaller supersonic private jet. Uniquely, they're planning to reduce complexity and increase efficiency by eliminating windows entirely in the passenger cabin, replacing them with screens, displaying high-definition camera feeds from outside. Despite its lack of big-name partners and a less-like public appearance, Spike is viewed as a real contender and is working on a similar timescale to area. Then there's Boom Technologies. If you've heard of any supersonic aircraft developer, this is the one whose business model is entirely different. They're not taking the conservative, safer routes with smaller private jets. They want the whole pie. They want to be Concorde 2.0.
After emerging from the same powerhouse Silicon Valley accelerator program responsible for Airbnb, DoorDash, Reddit, and more, they've initially focused their time and funding on developing a one-person proof-of-concept supersonic jets, the XB-1 to serve their ultimate goal of launching a 65 to 88 passenger commercial supersonic. Jets the Overture, like Carrion, they have some serious partners. Japan Airlines, U.S. Air Force, and Rolls-Royce, and more interviewed as the most ambitious of the three companies, yet potentially the one with the most attainable goal. Now supersonic passenger travel has already existed, even if it doesn't now. It will not be a technological breakthrough to simply make that happen again. What will be a breakthrough if achieved, though, is doing what Concorde could not conquer, could not facilitate. Widespread supersonic travel in a sustainable manner, both economically and environmentally, these companies just might a good portion of Concorde's issues originated from noise. You see, a sonic boom is not as some incorrectly believe an isolated burst of noise. At the moment a plane reaches the speed of sound from the ground, it is perceived as an isolated burst of sound since a plane, and therefore its shockwaves are moving. But a sonic boom originates continuously as any object travels above the speed of sound. Therefore, if Concorde were to fly from New York to Los Angeles at supersonic speeds, everyone between the cities would hear the 110 decibel noise that's roughly equivalent to the loudness of a chainsaw in your own hands, so it's no wonder why nearly every country in the world bans supersonic planes over lands. Many believe that to make supersonic passenger aviation viable, these bans need to end gaining the political will to allow a small number of incredibly wealthy people in supersonic jets to create such noise. Pollution is unrealistic, so rather quite a lot of work is being put into turning the sonic boom into more of a sonic thump. While there are a few different techniques being tested, NASA is leading one of the most concerted efforts to create a low-boom supersonic plane. They contracted Lockheed Martin to develop the X-59 as part of their low-boom flight demonstrator program, and if successful, it will turn the perceived loudness of a sonic boom from that of a chainsaw to a car door closing. You see, with Concorde or essentially any existing supersonic plane, someone on the ground, or more accurately, the ocean would actually hear two booms in very rapid succession. That's because these shock waves that are perceived as sonic booms originate almost entirely from the nose and tail of the aircraft they coalesce together and travel to the ground, leaning to those two rapid booms. The theory behind NASA's X-59 aircraft is to spread those shock waves out to create a longer but quieter sonic boom with an elongated skinny shape and strategically placed canards, smaller shockwaves originate across the length of the aircraft, thereby spreading the impact out after taking its first flight in 2022. This aircraft will be deployed from 2023 to 2025 to conduct tests over certain towns and cities. They'll then gather feedback from those on the ground, essentially asking if the sound is tolerable before bringing them back. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe so that you won't miss any future uploads.